All right, guys, today I'm going to share with you an estate sale tool haul, mostly tools. I did end up getting a couple other small items, but the main thing I went there for was this Dremel tool um, because I'm down to only one Dremel. I blew up my last one, and I always like to have a backup. Got a nice pile of some tools there. It looks like a pretty cool knife and some old USA Vermont American bits uh, amongst some other things so let's take a look so like I mentioned I went there for this that was the main thing I saw it in the advertisement had to wait a long time to get in over an hour with social distancing so when I got in there I, I took my time and I wanted to make sure I got a decent deal so I basically paid 60 bucks for everything you're gonna see here and it took a lot of negotiating because they were driving a hard bargain and they were trying to get a premium so let me know what you think about uh the value i got for 60 bucks but like i said i wanted to get a backup um the one i had is pretty much um the same one as this but i had another one that was a little bit newer dremel that burnt out recently so in the box you got 175 uses um a book and look at that, $7.95 somebody charged for this in 1989 when this was printed. Uh, it just shows what people are willing to pay for knowledge, right? Uh, nowadays, you get everything online. And it just shows how much the world has changed, you know? Somebody thumbing through this, and I just think that is really cool. I didn't even realize that this was in there um, until I got home. And um, for, you know, today's value, this is probably 15 bucks, right? In today's dollars. And to think somebody would spend that, you know, and people would spend a lot more money for things back then because you just didn't have the access to things that you have now with the internet. Um, then it's got the owner's manual, which is awesome because I have the Craftsman model that's similar to this that doesn't have the manual. And then the tool itself is in good shape. Um, I ran it real quick while I was there to make sure it worked, and it does. What I really like about it is it's got this quick tip on it, and these are 10 bucks. So that alone was nice, not having to use the wrench every time to unscrew it. I believe that's the quick release one. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll have to mess with it. But if it is, then I'm ahead of the game. And it looks like it is because it doesn't use the one with the wrench. And the other thing that was in here that I was completely surprised about is it's got the adapter. This goes on to the Dremel. And then you could use this for fine tips, uh, for engraving or really fine um, work where you need to get into an access point. So this thing is like brand, brand new. And that is a nice find that I didn't know was in there either. Uh, let me show you the one I had. It's a really nice one. So as this well. is the one I had. As you can see, it's almost identical. It's just, it's just Craftsman. It's made in Racine, Wisconsin, which I love about these older uh, Dremel tools. Dremel obviously made them for Sears instead of Dremel. That it says there, it says Craftsman, and this is the kit that I use. And these trays are great, so um, I'm glad I got another tray. Obviously, it doesn't have a lot of stuff in it, but it'll get once I use that to organize and sort, it will. So really happy with that. Look how nice my that one cleaned up. It was in worse shape than this one when I first got it. So I know that this one will clean up just as good so let's take a look at some other items. all right so in this pile of tools that i collected I, I picked some things i think that are pretty cool first being these rules bates national rule company and that is out of hackettstown new jersey um you can never have enough rulers it looks like a nice stainless steel but look at the back of it. it's got some nice cork on it and that's i'm assuming so it doesn't slide and it doesn't mar the surface um, i picked up a 12 inch and an 18 inch so that was a great find some really nice screwdrivers that are a little different Irwin usa i'm not too familiar with these with the black handle the tip was just pristine and i love the handle and i thought this was going to be a matching one but it's actually a stanley usa with the black oxide and this is a number three um, which i really like number twos i use them eh, the most no pun intended <laughs> um how about this here um craftsman Weston Forge. It's got the little bit adapter. The top opens up. It's always cool when you can find some old craftsmen like that. I've seen some videos where you could polish these up and clean them up. Maybe this would be one I would do it on. I wouldn't just do it on a regular screwdriver where the acetate was like faded out like that and didn't smell too bad. It passed the sniff test. Um, but the fact that it has the cap on it, this might be one that I, I try to restore and clean up. Then just picked up a bunch of pliers western forge 
uh, USA made craftsmen's. What I like about these is they're actually engraved, the USA. So when you clean these up, it'll still say USA and craftsman on it uh, versus the one where they're stamped on. Once you put this on a fiber wheel or a wire wheel, it takes it right off. So should be able to restore these back to new. This one is maybe the newer one where it's imprinted. Uh, but hey, you know what? If it ends up in the tackle bag, it ends up in the tackle bag after I clean it up because I got so many of these. Or if it turns out great and it works real well, and it, uh, it's good there as well. It's good U.S. steel. Always pick up a scraper when I can, especially USA made ones. You know, you get into a project using something really gooey, a gunky, tar, this, that, and the other thing, and you, you don't feel like cleaning it and you toss it out. Hey, it was worth it when you pick them up for basically next to nothing. Same thing with these little screwdrivers when I can find them. Uh, for basically next to nothing they're, they're pry bars right and you don't want to snap the tips off your good ones so this would be one if you snap the tip off you wouldn't mind regrind it nice pair of pliers here these are um who makes these these are crescent usa made crescent How, it's got a nice flush joint here on this side though it has the nut that could come off and the teeth just look great on them look at the teeth on them these will restore up. The steel on this is probably fantastic and would be, you know, look at the handles on it with the grip. Those will be really nice once those get uh, redone. I mean, I love the Western Forge. You know, you can't go wrong with them when you get a number two that's in great shape like this. You grab them. This was a unique set of pliers and I don't know the make on it. It said, it looks like it's going to have to clean it up and see. But look at the small little tip on that, huh? Reminds me of some uh, more modern ones I have from Channel Lock. Uh, but we'll clean those up eventually. I, I love these here. They, 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 they'll shine right up when you can get those. These I'm not such a huge fan of. These are the Craftsman pliers that had the this like silver coating on it, chrome coating. Uh, they're okay. They're just basically something to have. These are nice though. Crescent, made in the USA. They're probably six inch um wire cutters with the little stripper on it and they have nice beefy handles on them they really do so happy with those and then this i'm looking really forward to restoring this is a vintage duck bill i just did a video on some duck bills that i recently purchased from um uh sk and i believe these are diamond I'm gonna have to clean them up and see but the teeth look decent and the handles look decent. So I am really excited to have a pair of vintage duckbills. And then the last thing in this pile of tools that I thought was really cool is this knife. It's got that wood handle I've seen. I'm not, I'm no knife expert, but I know a lot of tool guys that uh, do knives and Scoutcraft does a lot of knives on his. And I know that those are actually individual pieces of wood um, on there and it just seemed really tight. The steel seemed really good. It, I don't know. I'm not even familiar with this brand. It's Sh Schrade Walden, New York, USA, H15. So uh, the blade actually still has a nice sharpness to it. Um, look forward to restoring it. That is a nice looking knife. I, I'm, I'm assuming the blade's maybe four or five inches. I have to measure that. Uh, but when I saw the condition of the handle, I think this will clean up like a million bucks. And look at this little knife I grabbed. Just this tiny little pocket knife. No big deal. But the reason I grabbed it is because said made in the usa so you can't find stuff like this anymore made in the usa even if it's just a tiny little pocket knife so when i could grab them i grab them all right last two items here the first one up is this bit set uh vermont american it's just got all different phillips and whatnot it's got some nut drivers some other sizes here some torques and whatnot um it's from the late 90s 99 made in the usa so i might resell it we'll see i, I need to refill my uh eat my uh paypal account been spending a lot in there so it's, i probably don't need them i definitely don't need them i got plenty of bits usa made ones but you don't find these anymore all the bits you know that you see whether it's the walt or whatever you're seeing when you're in lowe's or home depot are not usa made it's really nice when you could get some with the usa steel then the last thing i bought probably more for my wife because i saw her um, borrowing one of these from my sister. It's just a glue gun. And I saw that it was really old and it was still in the package. Um, look at this. Still in the original packaging. 
I'm not sure if it's made in the USA. I can't, I'm gonna open it up eventually and see, but this still has the plastic on it. I don't know if the glue is still good. I'm assuming it is. I'll have to try it out. I just saw a really vintage glue gun, probably from the, I'm thinking 70s maybe. I'll have to open it up and take a look more at the branding and whatnot. It'd be really cool if it was made in the USA, but it's probably made in Japan, but it's got a nice little case. So, a couple of other items to look at. Let's take All a look. All right, last couple of items, oddball items, um, some baseball stuff. I, I, you know, had some family over recently, some friends, and we're throwing the ball around the backyard, and over the years, a lot of the gloves got misplaced, and, uh, you know, we had share gloves and i was i said you know what next time i'm out and i could grab a glove that's a reasonable price i'm gonna grab a glove so i had two of them one of them she just wanted too much money for this was in the package though for 60 bucks with all the tools um it's a softball glove but it'll work for throwing the ball around the yard it's in good shape nice leather mcgregor but I, this ball was in it and this ball believe it or not i know a lot about baseball as a collect um a lot of autographed baseballs and whatnot and this is a hall of fame tribute ball uh, May 13, 12th and 13th, that was the Hall of Fame weekend, 1993, and it's an original Bobby Brown baseball. So um, original baseballs with no signatures, and the fact that it's a Hall of Fame, it's a, that's at least a $20 bill, if not more. So have to do some homework on that. And then I just saw these baseball bats, and I had to pick them up. Louisville Sluggers. Um, this one does not have a ball player on it. Uh, oh, this is for softball. I just saw that. Okay. That's what the V's may be for, the 125 V. The Hillrich and Bradsbury, Louisville Slugger. So that's a pretty cool bat, but I like this one even better because this one's definitely a baseball bat. And um, this one has the Boog Powell, and I believe he played for the Senators back in the day. I'm not 100% sure um, in the 70s, and it is in really nice shape. It's got one little nick there. Uh, but these will clean up, and it, it's just something nice to have. I mean, you don't see a lot of these wood bats anymore. Um, there's the bottom of it. it. has the model number on it there. B P5. So it looks like it's got a little crack in the handle, actually. But, yeah, don't plan on using them, that's for sure. Um, I, I, I banged it against the ground, and it had a nice sound to it. So it, the crack is not in the handle where it would impact it if I did use it, but was really happy with these as well. So, like I said, I was on that line a long time, and I said, you know what? While I'm out this way, let me see if there's anybody selling anything on Letgo. Had an hour to kill while I was waiting to get into this estate sale, and look what I found for 10 bucks. Look at this tool stand I got. I'm thinking of putting my drill press on it. How do you beat that for 10 bucks? It was literally two miles from where this estate sale was. I made the deal while waiting online, um, and this is what I'm looking to put on it. Ooh, she beautiful. All right, you're going to have to watch the video to see the restoration of the rest of that drill press. And hopefully it'll end up on All this. All right, we'll guys, see. 60 bucks for everything you see here. Um, like and subscribe. If you know anything about these items, please put it in the comment section, especially like that knife and whatnot. I really don't know uh, much about them. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is I also got two full cans of WD-40, and these are the 14 and a half and 15 ounce size, and they are pretty much full. So that was in the package as well for 60 bucks. So like and subscribe, and talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.